every candidate who intends on applying to a U.S. medical residency program has to know everything about the new ERAS application. This video will be a step-by-step -step guide so that you can submit your ERAS application on time and to ultimately increase your chances of matching. If you like content like this, please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. So let's get into it. So this new application is actually called the Supplemental ERAS application. And the purpose of it is for applicants to highlight their experiences and interest to programs so that the selection of applicants for interviews or for finally matching into a program is more targeted or more streamlined. So you might be wondering how. Well, it's pretty interesting how they created this supplemental application, which I will get into. But first, you might be wondering who is eligible to complete this supplemental ERAS application. So if you are applying to any of the specialties that I'm about to mention, then you are eligible to complete the supplemental ERAS application. So these specialties include dermatology, general surgery, and internal medicine. I want to highlight that for general surgery, it's for categorical residency programs only. However, if you intend on applying to a categorical or a preliminary internal medicine residency program, then you are also eligible to complete the supplemental ERAS application. But the purpose of mentioning this is to highlight the fact that for applicants who intend on applying to prelim general surgery, then the supplemental ERAS application would not be a requirement for you. So some people might be wondering, is the supplemental ERAS application a replacement for the usual or normal My ERAS application? And the answer is no, it is not a replacement, but like its name suggests, it's a supplement. So you have to do both the supplemental application and the My ERAS application as well. So it definitely seems like for applicants applying to dermatology, categorical general surgery, and categorical and preliminary internal medicine, they definitely have some more work to do since they have this additional application to apply to. Well, I mean this additional application to complete. Well, even though there is a bit more work and time that will have to be put into the application, the good news is that the supplemental application fee is zero dollars and zero cents. So it's absolutely free to do this. A crucial point to note is that for the submission of this new application, they have what they call submission windows. You have a window number one and window number two. So for window one, the application is open to advocates on September 1st at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to September 19th at 11.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, for window 2, that time period is between September 20th to September 30th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, remember, for anything related to the match or ERAS or anything related to U.S. residency, it's almost always in Eastern Standard Time. So be sure that you're aware of that. The main reason why it's so important that you pay attention to the windows and when they open and close is because it dictates when programs will be able to view your applications. For Window 1 applicants, programs will be able to view their applications on September 29th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, while for Window 2, 
they can view your applications on October 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So even though this new application is obviously new, it's no secret that when it comes to applying for residency programs, being on time is key. So for the 2022 match, programs for all specialties will be able to view your applications on September 29th. So ideally, I'd recommend anyone applying to internal medicine, general surgery, or dermatology to try and be in window one. So with window one, programs will be able to view your entire application in its entirety on the same day at the same time. So if you want to be at a advantage in any way, it's very important that you take a note of these dates and once I provide you with the guide of what you need to write in the supplemental application, then you can even start brainstorming or writing from now before the application opens so that you have all of that beforehand. So you know who is eligible to fill out this application. You know when it can be filled out and submitted and even viewed by programs, but you might be wondering, how can I access this application? Well, once a applicant saves one or more programs in dermatology, internal medicine, or general surgery, then you will get an email inviting you to complete the application. So it's very important that you ensure that the email address associated with your MyERS account is accurate so that once you get that email you definitely don't want to miss it so from september 1st to september 30th applicants will be getting invitations via email to complete the application of course you'll only get it if you apply or save one or more program in any of the specialties that we've been talking about it is also highly recommended that you complete this application using a computer like a desktop or a laptop and to ensure that you use the latest versions of browsers like Chrome and Firefox. And also they say that they do not recommend Internet Explorer 9, 10, and 11 to complete this application. So just be aware of that. Another very, very important question that we have to answer is how will programs use the supplemental application? But before I answer that, please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. So some of the main purposes of using the supplemental application is for it to serve as another way of initial screening for applicants and it will also be used as secondary screening for applicants soon enough i'll get into how this can be beneficial for many applicants especially for ings another way that they can use the information from the application is using it as a complement to the interview process so for example, in a interview, applicants could be asked about different aspects of their My ERS application or especially their personal statement. So for this supplemental application, it will be providing them with information that can be very beneficial for you to get an interview and to also have a hopefully a better interview per, um, experience. So what are the differences between the My ERS application and the supplemental application? While they do have some overlapping features, the supplemental application has some pretty amazing features that I think a lot of applicants will be excited about. But first, let's look at those overlapping features. So for my ERS, of course, you have to mention all your experiences, whether it's work, volunteering, or research. For the supplemental application, they also want you to mention your experiences. 
However, it would be organized in a top five format. So here you would be mentioning the top five meaningful experiences related to research, your work, your medical training, just something in your entire journey that you think the program that you want to match into or the programs that you're applying to should know. And of course, in my ERS, you also mention your publications. And in the supplemental ERS application, you can discuss your research outputs and you can talk about specific research experiences that have been meaningful to you. Now let's get into the pretty interesting differences that I think some candidates would be excited about. So for my ERAS, you cannot have any location preferences listed. For example, you can say, hey, I'd like to match in Texas or California or New York. But for the supplemental application, you do have an option to list preferences based on your location. You can also list preferences for a urban program versus a rural program. But there is one specialty that does not have this option. So remember, I mentioned general surgery, internal medicine, and dermatology. So one of those don't have that option. But I will definitely get into that later in the video. So be sure to watch this until the end. Another key thing about the differences between my ERS and the supplemental application is that for the supplemental application, you can have program preference signals. So you might be wondering, isn't that what a rank order list is for? Well, no, it's completely different because for a rank order list, that's like after you submit your application and you do your interviews and then you have the option or you have to create that rank order list. However, for this program preference signal, this is submitted before you even get an interview. And it's basically letting the program know that this is a program that I definitely want to match into and I'm interested in. I think this option not only benefits applicants, but it's also the programs too, because oftentimes programs will be sending out invitations to applicants who already pre-match or already um, had an interview at their dream school and they don't really want to match into their program. So this would allow programs to be able to see who are the persons that really want to go there. And now we're going to take a closer look at these fields that are required to be filled out. So for the supplemental application, like I said, you have to have top five meaningful experiences as well as research experience listed. So let's go into how the format of this is on the actual application. So you have the general experiences section where you can list things like your positional title and the organization name associated with that experience. Um, a key thing to notice about these two things is that there is a character limit that is 100. So keep that in mind for anyone that has an insanely long organization name that they had some experiences with. You also have to indicate whether it is an ongoing experience. If not, then you have to state the end date. Also, your frequency of participation. Also, what type of experience was it? Was it educational experience, research experience, um, military service, volunteer experience, you name it. So just um, specify the type of experience. Also, the location, which can be listed as the United States, international or virtual. And for this setting, you can mention if it was a rural or urban experience or if there were multiple settings or if uh, all of the options listed there are just not applicable. And finally, the knowledge of medicine that was required for that experience. So the next set of experiences or questions will be about medical or healthcare experiences. 
and in this section you will list the institution um, what type of patient care like was it outpatient inpatient both or just not applicable as well as the clinical training type next up we have research experiences this is where you'll list the type of research like was it basic science clinical educational like what type of research was it and the research output that refers to was it an oral presentation was it a poster and the citation for the research output the contribution as well as any other like additional research output that you'd like to mention volunteer experiences so if you volunteered as a hospice as a first responder with the elderly health education you get the drift like any sorts of volunteer experiences this is where you basically have your time to shine and mention those experiences meaningful experiences so this is one of those sections where you have a character limit again which is 300 characters and in this section they expect you to state different experiences that were meaningful and you can answer questions like what did you learn from this experience why do you consider it to be meaningful how was it a key part of your career development or your career goals so you basically have 300 characters to answer all those questions and hopefully leave a pretty good impression on the program that is reviewing or seeing your supplemental application. And finally, we have other impactful experiences. So this has a character limit, which is 750 characters. So the purpose of this section is to give applicants the opportunity to provide um, background information on their life experiences or anything relating to their journey to residency. So this is where you can discuss your family background, your financial background, um, the type of community that you grew up in or your different educational experiences. So the guidelines for completing the supplemental application it states that programs aren't expecting everyone to have this section filled out so it's best that you only do it if it applies to you so if you have a impactful experience or situation during your entire usmle or residency journey or your medical school journey then this is a time to state that in a very um, eloquent way um, of course within the character limit of 750 characters so now that you have a fairly good understanding of the experiences and what you are expected to write now let's focus on the key features of the supplemental application so of course one of them is preference signaling so what is preference signaling so this is where applicants can let their interests be known to the residency programs that they have submitted their applications to. So at the time of application, these residency programs will know that you are interested in them if you signal them. The preference signaling will mainly be used for programs to know who to invite for interviews. It's very, very important that you know that programs won't be notified if you don't signal them. So for example, let's say that you apply to a hundred programs and you signal five of them, right? The other 95 won't get a notification saying, hey, they did not signal you. Those programs will just see whether or not they were signaled. If they were signaled, then great. Maybe they review your application and then extend an interview offer to you. How many preference signals can I submit? Well, this depends on which specialty or specialties you are applying to. So let's take a closer look at this. 
So for dermatology, you can have three programs to preference signal to. While for general surgery and internal medicine, you can signal up to five programs. Another key feature of the new supplemental application is that it includes the option for applicants to mention geographic preferences. But it is crucial to know that for general surgery, geographic information will not be shared with those programs. So for dermatology and internal medicine, you can select your geographic preferences and you can share it with those programs. But for general surgery, you do not have that option. So you might be wondering what geographic preferences am I talking about, right? Well, so you can like select US divisions, for example, Pacific West or Mountain West. So for Mountain West, that would include states like Arizona, um, Colorado, and Utah. Other U.S. divisions include West North Central, East North Central, West South, and East South Central. And finally, we have the South Atlantic Division and the Middle Atlantic Division. So the Middle Atlantic Division includes states like New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. While for the New England Division, that includes states like Connecticut, and Vermont. But it's important to note that it isn't compulsory to choose one or any of these divisions. You have the option to choose responses like, I do not have a division preference or I do not wish to communicate a division preference. However, it's very important to note that if you do choose a division, like let's say Middle Atlantic with New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, then you have to provide an explanation as to why this division is a preference for you. So for this section or explanation, you have a character limit, which is 300 characters. It's extremely important that you know that only programs in this division will see that it is your preference. So let's say that you choose the Middle Atlantic Division. Only programs in New Jersey, New York, or Pennsylvania will see that this is your preference. Some people can even think of this as sort of a secondary signaling. Because like I said before, for the program signaling, you will see, well, the programs will see if you are interested in them at the time of application. However, if you have a preference for a certain region, then all the programs in those regions will see that that region is your preference as well. But like I said, remember that you have the option to choose I have no division preferences. And if you do decide to choose this response, then it will be shared with all programs that you apply to. So aside from stating your preferences for a U.S. division, you can also state your preferences for urban programs or rural programs. So you can choose a rural area which is sparsely populated with a population of 2,500 or less or a urban population that has around 50,000 or more people. Again, you have the option of stating that you do not have a preference. But if you do have a preference, then again, you have up to 300 characters to explain why you have this preference. So let's move on to the recommendations or the tips that Iras mentioned for completing this supplemental application. And that is to complete the My Eras application first. Because like I said, if you're applying to general surgery, internal medicine, or dermatology, you have to submit both the My ERAS and the supplemental application. So it's recommended to complete the My ERAS application first. Next, to prepare your responses in advance. So I just went through the different sections 
and it also leave a link of the guidelines for this so that you can more accurately see the entire picture and complete this for yourself. So like I said, applications won't be open for submission until September 1st. However, you don't have to wait until September 1st to get that done. And remember, we spoke about the importance of window one. So if you want to adhere to that, then you can prepare your responses in advance. Next is to adhere to character limits. So that's why I made a point to mention the character limits for the different sections whenever mentioned so that when you are writing or preparing your responses in advance, you can try your best to adhere to those character limits so that when the application opens, you don't realize that, hey, I have 900 character limits, but the limit is actually 750. So just remember the character limits and adhere to them. The next tip, which is probably the most obvious, is to answer every question. So of course, you would not want to submit an incomplete application. Next is to consult your advisor or mentor. So of course, if you go to a U.S. medical school, then you'd have access to these persons. However, if you are an IMG, then this could mean that reaching out to somebody who is a colleague, but preferably someone who is more experienced with this entire process and will be able to advise you on what to write, um, coach you on good experiences, how to write, making sure that the grammar, the spelling, the use of words, everything is just up to par and will leave a very positive impression on the program so that they can invite you to interviews and leading to you ultimately matching. And finally, you need to get it reviewed. The last thing that you want to do to submit an application that is fraught with spelling errors, grammatical errors, or something that just looks like you did not put much time or effort into it. And believe it or not, some candidates do make the fatal mistake of mentioning like the incorrect specialty or incorrect program. And you might be thinking that will never happen to me, but you never know. So it's always best to have an experienced second set of eyes on this application or for any application for this entire process because it's long and it's definitely expensive. If you have any questions about the new ERS application, then please leave your questions in the comment section below or you can message me on Instagram as well and I'll be sure to leave that link below. But as always, if you like this content, then please be sure to support the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!